Over the past few months, there has been a lot of excitement about a family of stocks known loosely as genomic stocks. And this excitement has primarily been led by disruptive tech investment guru, Kathy Wood. In fact, most recently she was quoted as saying this. Which of your current holdings, Kathy, do you think will supply the biggest lift in the next five years? Tesla's still in the running, but I would have to say, the biggest upside surprises are going to come from the genomic space. The convergence of DNA sequencing, artificial intelligence, and gene therapies, importantly, CRISPR gene editing, are going to cure disease. So after I heard this, I got really excited. Could this be the next Tesla, the next Netflix or Amazon? But there was only one issue. I'm not a geneticist, and I definitely do not have any sort of medical background to try and understand this stuff. So like any good millennial investor, I turned to my friend Google to try and get a grasp of the whole genomic revolution space. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. After a few hours of researching, I kinda hit a wall. I found exactly zero videos that give a really good high level explanation of what exactly is happening in this space and the best stocks that are leading the space. So I figured if we can't buy it, might as well build it. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Mike Kelly. In today's video, I'm gonna do my very best to try and explain the genomic revolution as a whole, why it's important, and as I'm going through, I'm gonna tell you guys some of the most well-known stocks in each of the areas that I cover. If that sounds good to you, stick around, smash that like button down below. I would really appreciate it, and let's dig into today's video. Okay, so before I kind of just throw you guys into the deep end, I first want to explain there's really three areas that we're going to look at today. Number one is genome sequencing. Number two is gene editing. And number three is gene data storage and analysis. I'm going to explain what each of these mean in just a second. But first, Kathy Wood's bullish call on this sector of the economy over the next five years is really not about one individual. It's about them working together as a whole. So it's the intersectionality of each of these technologies together. With any new disruptive technology, if it's heavily reliant on another technology to succeed, then it's likely going to fail if that other technology is not at the same level as the new technology. For example, Apple had a fantastic product when it released the iPod, but if MP3 technology didn't exist yet, then why would anyone want to buy an iPod? And I guess another example would be Tesla. In 2012, when they released the Model S sedan, it was a fantastic product, but if battery technology didn't allow you to drive more than 10 miles on a single charge, I think Tesla would have had a really hard time bringing the product to market. And that's my point with this genomic revolution. Each of these are kind of reliant on one another. And the fact that all of them are growing at the same time is a really, really bullish signal. So keep this in mind as I'm explaining things here. Now, number one on my list, what is genome sequencing? If you Google it, this is the answer you'll get. Genome sequencing is figuring out the order of DNA nucleotides or bases in a genome, the order of A's, C's, G's, and T's that make up an organism's DNA. Not very helpful to a non-geneticist, but if we simplify it, it's basically the ability to view the entire structure of a particular genome, and a genome is the thing that houses the genetic material of a particular organism. And when we can sequence someone's genome, we're able to see if there's any mutations that may cause disease in the future. And I think a lot of us are really excited about this because that means that we'll be able to treat disease before the disease even happens, right? It's the difference between proactive active and reactive medicine. Applying a real world scenario to this could be something like an aggressive form of cancer. The sooner that we understand that the cancer is there, the sooner that we can treat it. But with genetic sequencing, if we know that the cancer may happen before it even starts, we have a much better chance of making sure our loved ones survive. Some publicly traded companies that operate in the genomic sequencing sector are Pacific Biosciences, Illumina, and 10X Genomics. This is where I circle back to Kathy Wood's point about the intersection of these technologies. What good is it to sequence your DNA and know that you have some sort of mutation that might lead to an early death if there's nothing you can do to fix it? This is where the second technology I want to talk about today comes into play, gene editing. At a high level, gene editing sounds super simple, but I can promise you it really isn't. It's actually probably the furthest from simple out of each of these three categories. But I think complexity is kind of a poor excuse for ignorance here. So I did my best to research this area and simplify it as much as possible. So here it goes. The most common technology used in gene editing is known as CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspace Short Palindromic Repeats. Listen, Mike in the lamps and everything the sheep just count, just count out the nice bit of money like 
That never gets old. CRISPR-Cas9 is made up of two parts, as you can imagine, CRISPR-Cas9. The first part is a guide RNA, which actually recognizes the DNA sequence that needs to be edited. And then the second part is a Cas9 protein that, that's able to then cut that DNA sequence or the mutated portion of it out from the DNA to fix it. Now, going back to my cancer example from earlier, if we do a genetic sequencing test on an individual and that test comes back and says that this individual has a mutated gene that they're going to end up having breast cancer at some point in their life, instead of that individual having to go under the knife with some invasive surgery, we can use CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing to go in, find that mutated gene, cut it out, and that person would have a much lower chance of ever developing breast cancer. Pretty amazing, right? Some publicly traded companies in this area of the space are CRISPR Therapeutics, Editas Medicine, and Intelia Therapeutics. So now we have the first two pieces of our analysis. Number one, the technology that finds the mutation, and number two, the technology that edits away that mutation. Now the last piece that I wanna to cover today is the data storage of all that genetic data. And and this is probably the most controversial of the three. Probably the most well-known company in this space is Invite. While they do do their own genetic tests, most of the value of this company, in my opinion, and from the research, what I've read about them, is really about the data analysis that they provide and the analysis that they're able to then hand over to primary care doctors to help them actually develop some sort of treatment plan. In simple terms, big data analysis for genetics. Now, why do I say this is controversial? In genetics, there's something called a polygenic risk score. And in the future, we're likely all gonna have one. That polygenic risk score tells us the likelihood of each disease that we're predisposed to based on our own genetic sequence. But more importantly, it tells us what disease that we're more likely to pass on to our offspring. And the reason why this is controversial is because if that data and that information gets into the wrong hands, we could quickly slide down a very slippery slope. For example, if the government knows that you're predisposed to passing on some sort of disease to your offspring, the government may try to impose some sort of law or some sort of rule that you're not allowed to have children unless you fix that genetic mutation. Now, I know that sounds completely dystopian and hard to understand and probably not actually ever gonna happen, but based on what's been happening recently in the government, I honestly would not count anything out. I think now that we have kind of a high level view of all three of these areas, I think it's a lot easier to understand the dependence each of these technologies have on one another. Without being able to sequence a genome, you have nothing to edit. And without being able to edit a genome, you can't fix the problem. And without being able to accurately analyze the information that you've collected from the genome sequencing, then there's no way you can actually form a treatment plan. But the great news is that all of these three technologies do exist. And not only that, is that the accuracy and the scope of these analyses is expanding exponentially, while the cost is declining significantly. And this, in my opinion, is a perfect storm for an investor looking for long-term gains. Just before I let you go, I wanna mention a few things. Number one is that nothing in this video, and I mean nothing, should be taken as financial advice. Before you make any financial decisions, consult your own financial advisor. The second thing I wanna mention is that I am in no way a medical professional. So if I mentioned anything in this video that's incorrect, please feel free to correct me in the comment section down below. Lastly, it took me a ton of time to pull all of this information together and do my very best to simplify it for you all. So if you got any value from it at all, I'd really appreciate your support with a thumbs up down below and even more a subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Take care and I'll see you next week. Peace.